Hi, this is Mark Birch. Today I'm going to be analysing and providing revision material for the third part of Jekyll and Hyde Chapter 10, Henry Jekyll's full statement of the case. Jekyll's narrative moves from a consideration of the philosophical to the practical process of separating the constituents of identity. The solidity of the body is dismissed as seemingly so, and the semantic field of the ephemeral complements this sense. Stevenson uses phrases such as trembling immateriality, mist-like transience and immaterial tabernacle to convey the body's lack of permanence. The impermanence of the body is conveyed once again through Stevenson linguistically separating the body from the individual. The body is described as a fleshly vestment in which we walk attired. The metaphor of clothing to denote the body helps to convey the sense of it being a temporary form for the self to inhabit, something that can be removed and changed. The verb trembling suggests a fragility of the body's form, reinforced by the mist-like aspect. The connotations of a shifting form complement the sense created by trembling. The body is not fixed as an aspect of identity. Jekyll suggests that his research has provided a means to remove the physical form with ease, the simplicity of the process is captured through the verb pluck, a movement that connotes a light touch, and it's supported through the simile as a wind might toss the curtains of a pavilion. Such curtains would offer little resistance to the wind, just as the body would offer little resistance to the power of Jekyll's drug. Both the reference to the body as clothing and the image of the curtains of a pavilion could allude to a biblical reference from Corinthians, which states, If the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven not built by human hands. Meanwhile we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. This biblical reference to resurrection may be exploited by Stevenson to convey the way in which Jekyll believes himself able to be born again in a new form or heavenly dwelling in which the different aspects of the self can be free. This illusion may also be ironic as Stevenson could be referencing the way in which Jekyll is playing God, an overreaching of the limits of mankind that would be condemned by many in Victorian society. His enterprise is also doomed to failure because the new self is built by human hands. Stevenson presents Jekyll as reluctant to explore the specifics of his scientific discovery for two reasons. Firstly, attempts to remove his moral burdens have led to an increase in these burdens, so he seeks to protect his readers from this mental anguish. And secondly, his discoveries are incomplete, as he can't identify the impurity in the salt used. Jekyll's caution regarding the use of his drug is evident in his description of its power to shake the fortress of identity. The drug's power is illustrated by its capacity to weaken a fortress, something that's built for defence and which, in this case, seems to metaphorically denote Jekyll's sense of self. In contrast, the drug may utterly blot out the immaterial tabernacle that Jekyll sought to change. The tabernacle, or tent, is a weak structure, the antithesis of the fortress, and this sense of weakness is complemented by the adjective immaterial. It appears paradoxical to present the material body as immaterial, but this paradox could represent Jekyll overstepping the bounds of scientific logic. Jekyll's philosophical and chemical experiments have convinced him that the body is subject to change, and his concern is not that the transformation might not work, but that an overdose could kill him. Okay, ta.